Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Bros, and today we're going to be talking about the short story Saving Surdy, written by Meili Chai. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, this short story begins with um, two sisters, um, Ni and um, Surdy. Now, these two sisters, they're very close. Um, at the beginning of the story, um, Ni, we find, you know, Ni's our narrator. And she's basically telling us um, her connection um, with her sister and, and the reality of her family. Um, they're kind of like their journey um, um, in the United States, um, what life was like for them, what, what life was like for them, and what they had to go through to make it into the United States or to establish themselves in the United States. Um, Ni, you know, of course, again, she's our narrator, and she tells us that, you know, at the beginning, things were not great for them. Um, they lived in, you know, tough neighborhoods, neighborhoods where, you know, when you go to sleep at night, sometimes you would hear gunshots, you know, pe people playing, um, you know, all types of um, games for money and things like that. So when she first arrives um, or when her family are f establishing themselves in the United States, it was a tough upbringing. Um, but in this short story, we kind of see her and her mother and her sister. Um, they start to get a different type of life when they <clears throat> move in with their uncle. Um, and they're running this um, this restaurant, and everything is is wonderful. Um, well, you know, to it's better than what it was. Um, so they're 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 working in this restaurant, um, and there's this one night where Ni nee and her sister Surdy they are serving food, um, and these men are drinking and they're having a good old time. And one of the men, they um, one of like I guess you could say kind of like the leader of the group kind of um you know no he comes up and puts his arm around surdy and won't let her go and says you know he says a couple of phrases that are um aggressive telling her like if she struggles that he'll kiss her and all that kind of stuff and and Ni nee kind of jumps into that protective role trying to protect her sister because to me nee, surdy is everything it's her best friend um you know surdy is um the person that um you know, she kind of like confides in and they talk to each other. Um, you know, that's her best friend. That's her sister. That's her best friend. That's her person in the world. Um, and Ni, nee will, you know, she pretty much, you know, right from the get go, we kind of get the sense that Ni nee really loves her sister. Um, she'll do anything to uh, protect her sister and not lose her sister. Um, and Ni nee ends up stabbing this guy in the, in, in the arm, in the wrist area. Um, so that, you know, this guy could let go of Surdy and Surdy, you know, she gets free, the mom, their mom comes in, and their mom, you know, Ni nee is thinking that the mom is going to defend her and say, you know, don't touch my children and all that kind of stuff, but the mom's really thinking more about the legal, legal issues, and, you know, she tells the men that their food is for free, that their drinks are for free, and, and, you know, kind of like, you know, pretends to be nice and all that kind of stuff so that they don't get sued, and that they don't go to court for anything because, you know, um, Ni, nee, you know, stabbed the man and, and you know, that, that could be trouble. Um, so, Ni nee is kind of hurt by this, that their mom is kind of like thinking more of um, keeping everybody safe, keeping, keeping everybody um, alive, um, helping everyone, you know, all her children to survive because that's the background that the mom comes from. She comes from a background where the adults are just thinking about it. They're, they're not thinking about your happiness. They're thinking about your survival. The mom was married, you know, she was, she was married to someone very young. Um, and, um, they, you know, it's, it's all business. The family matters are, are all business, um, to this family. Um, because we, we and it kind of this kind of sets us up for what's going to happen later in the short story with Surdy because what happens next is that Surdy um, starts to um, or develops a relationship with Duke this um, this guy that they hired to work at the restaurant and Surdy develops a relationship with him at first the uncle 
um, thought that, you know, this guy was just going to work at the restaurant, but um, Duke and, and Surdy start to go out, and they start to develop a relationship, and as soon as the relationship start to go somewhere, um, the uncle fires Duke and, and goes into setting up a relationship with Mr. Che. Um, and, and Ni is watching this and, and there's a lot going on because it seemed, you know, for, for us as the readers of this short story, we don't like Mr. Che when he comes in and we don't like this culture that's being presented to us because, you know, from an American perspective, we have this idea of love being natural, of love being, you know, between two people, but from this culture, um, you know, this Asian culture that the, these people come from, um, the adults have more of a say into who you get married to, into who you date. Um, and when they, when the uncle and, and the mother see that Surdy was getting serious with this Duke guy, they quickly, you know, fire him, get rid of him, you know, pretty much try their best and, you know, they break up the relationship and they get this Mr. Che to come in and they pretty much um, set up an arranged marriage um, for Surdy. And Nee doesn't like this because it's and and Nee doesn't like this not because Mr. Che is a bad guy. I think Nee doesn't like this because she is being kicked to the curb, um, and and you know she is being get you know her place in Surya's life is being replaced by this Mr. Che or by Duke, and we kind of see that of course Nee is our narrator and she's telling us this story and really. She's making everybody, you know, at certain points of this short story, Duke seems like a bad guy. The mother seems like the like a bad guy. The uncle seems like the bad guy. And Mr. Che, when he comes in, he seems like the bad guy. And the reason why they all seem like the bad, or, you know, these people at different points in the story, they seem like the bad guys because they're kind of like separating me um, from from Surdy. And... Um, you know, Nia is our narrator, and she wants us to to really understand how much her sister means to her. That her sister is her best friend. That you know, when she's crying, she goes to her sister. When she wants someone to talk to, she goes to her sister. When she wants someone to hang out with, she goes to her sister. Um, and when other people come into her sister's life, try, trying to take you know her number one place in her sister's life, she doesn't like this. And in her mind, they're just bad people. They're not good news. Um, so, the story goes on, um, Duke and Surdy, they break up, um, there's an arranged marriage that gets set up with Mr. Che and, and Surdy, um, and at first, Surdy doesn't really like Mr. Che, or at least, that's what we think, because, again, this is, our narrator is Ni, nee, and, um, from her point of view, um, you know, she doesn't like Mr. Che because she knows, you know, that, you know, if Surdy gets married, you know, Surdy's going to move away. Um, so, Nee doesn't like that. So, Mr. Che is painted as a bad person. Um, so, we, at first, we don't really truly know um, Surdy's reaction to Mr. Che if she really, you know, didn't like him or if she really hated him. Um, but, I mean, if, if you're, if you're, if you're not factoring in Nee's emotions towards Mr. Che and you're, and you're just reading the words, it kind of seems that Mr. Che handles this like a business transaction because he comes into the restaurant to see the uncle um, in the in a business fashion. They they have a meeting, they they talk, they arrange things, they have scheduled dinners, and then you know the wedding happens. the The wedding is very mechanical. The relationship is very mechanical. Um, you can say that Duke and and Surdy, when they had their relationship, it was more, um, you know, kind of like that youth type of love, that young love type of you know things, kind of like. Um, everything's nervous and and everything's happening by instinct uh, instinct or or accident but with mr che the relationship between surdy and mr che it's all business all serious all mechanical it's like you know you have this family member she's attractive she's beautiful she's about to be 18 i'm mr che i'm an older man i have money i have a house um I can provide for her. I can protect her. I have money, um, so I'm 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 a better choice to be with this young girl than Duke because you know it's kind of like a business meeting. Um, it's very business. Duke is this young kid that just wants a girlfriend that just you know wants a girl, and that's what 
he's portrayed as and even knee describes him like that and mr che is more you know i want a family and i want a family now um and, and that's the energy we get from mr che and that's what happens because as soon as he comes in he shows his money he displays his money takes you know gives everybody in the family gifts and things like that and he just looks more the part to be a husband um and so it it's pretty much really rigid and the wedding get the wedding takes place Surdy gets married to mr che and us as the reader we don't like this because it feels arranged it feels business and in american culture we like the romance story we like the the two people falling in love and, and building a family we like it that way we don't like the business transaction feeling of romance um but yeah they do get married they move away Nee doesn't like this and she's really worried. She's really worried about Surti. She thinks that, you know, Surti's unhappy and that, you know, that things are not going well for Surti. Uh, but but everything's fine. You know, there's rough patches in, in, in marriage. Um, and there is this one instance where um, Surti calls home and she's kind of upset. And she's talking to her mom. And Nee thinks this is just the marriage exploding or imploding. And, and everything's going to to hell in the handbasket. And Nee's like, man, I have to go and rescue my sister. Because, you know, Mr. Chase probably abusing her. There's probably some domestic violence going on. There's probably, you know, rough housing and, and all these types of things. It's probably World War Three in that household. And Nee's like, pretty much she goes full on commando. She she goes full on Van Dam Rambo and she's like, you know, I need to go and rescue my sister. Um, and so she kind of like enlists Duke. Now, like, keep in mind, two years has gone by since um, Surdy and Mr. Che gets married when this happens. Um, and and he pretty much calls Duke in the middle of the night. She's like, we're, we're going to go rescue my sister. Um, in in I mean if she had like you know weapons she would probably you know like in those old 80s 90s music when people get ready for war and they're like you know putting all types of um, weapons and guns and bullets and you know in their per on their person and they're going out in full war this is what Nee kind of seems like in this short story because she's kind of like calling Duke she's like get the truck get the appliances we're going on a rescue mission and and that's what Nee portrays herself throughout this entire short story she's like this this grand rescuer and i mean it makes a lot of sense because the name of this short story is saving surdy so this is the saving part where she kind of like uh, you know pretty much leaves her house in the middle of the night um gets duke to drive her to wherever city um surdy lives and and finds the house and and you know she goes in barging into their house and it was like an early by the time when they get there when when duke and 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 then knee arrive at surdy's um house it's kind of like early morning and mr chase is about to go to work and um you know knee breaks into you know well she doesn't break into the house but basically what happens in they um knee goes in knocks at the door mr che opens the door she just you know pushes her way through and she's looking for her sister the, the the house is a mess on the inside and she's like where's my sister and um you know sturdy comes and, and and you know says here i am what's going on and and knee looks mad and angry at mr che and she thinks that it's world war three inside the house but it's just a messy house i mean you know sturdy uh, at this point she she was married at 18 but some time have gone by she has children now and there's a child on the way and mr che's you know she, he's working he has a job and it's just a normal family um, nothing is going, you know, nothing is going wrong. The The reason why um, Surdy did call home for that one um, situation was because she wanted to go back to school and, and her and Mr. Che kind of like had an argument over this. and But that all got sorted out. Like, you know, like things get, you know, arguments arise in marriages and arguments get solved. And, um, well, need you know, she doesn't get that, you know, her world hasn't expanded to understand that type of life just yet. Uh, but what she finds when she gets into the house is that, you know, Surdy has, a, you know, a 
kind of like a black eye and, and a bruised face and you know Ni nee automatically thinks that you know Mr. Che has been roughhousing and beating up Surdy but you know she just got injured on her own accord um, Duke busts in <laughs> and this is where the saving part comes in because Ni nee busts in now Duke busts in and Duke sees Surdy's face his ex-girlfriend's face and he's thinking okay Mr. Che you know he's been he's the he's the 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 domestic violence type of man he's the one you know abusing this woman that i used to like and he he unloads his fists and he punches mr che in the face and he's and mr che's bleeding and the rescue is on and he's like all right get the bags get the children we're out we're leaving this is the grand rescue this is like like you know the time like when you see in movies where um you know people bust in with guns and there's a helicopter in the background and people everybody serious this is the grand rescue and like you know Surdy and Mr. Che and the children are like what what's going on what the hell is going on we're we're just like a normal family and now you know Ni nee has this white man punching Asian people and she's like get out get out we're moving out we're moving out Surdy let's go let's go I mean it's kind of comical and then, you know, when the situation comes down, everybody's looking at Ni. Nee, she's kind of, you know, she busts out in laughter and starts laughing. She's like, oh, I guess I was wrong. So in her mind, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is D-Day. This is, this is the Grand Rescue, the Van Damme Rambo moment. And she just ends up looking ridiculous. Um, and pretty much Mr. Che goes to work and Surdy kisses him and it's like, go to work, honey. And... Duke looks like a fool and apologizes and well then Surdy pretty much tells Nee to go home um she wasn't invited and you know you just attacked your sister's husband for no reason and um yeah Surdy didn't even need any saving um so uh, really uh, uh, Nee is a very interesting character in terms of analysis here in terms of deeper meaning Nee is a very interesting character here um, when you have a sibling that you're very close to, I guess you want to protect them, you want to save them, you want to be there for them. Uh, but th but sometimes they don't need you, and 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 this teaches a lot about life. Sometimes even if you're close to your sibling, you know you're gonna separate at some point. Um, siblings, you you grow up together, but at some point you have to start your own family. And you probably have to move away from your siblings, your brother and sister. You're going to have to get your own life, um, maybe move away a state, a country. But that's just life. You can't stay with your sibling forever. I mean, thank God there's like phones and, and the Internet so you can keep talking. But in terms of living together and being super close to each other, that will end at some point when you guys grow up and start your own families. Um, uh, but Ni, nee, I mean, this was hard for her to let go of her sister because her sister was her person. And when her sister couldn't be her person anymore, this was, you know, it, it left her alone and, um, well, feeling lonely and, and by herself. And she tried to save her sister, but her sister didn't need any saving. Um, the other thing that's very interesting in this um, short story as well, I mean, you have some, I mean, Ni's nee probably... Um, a character that's living in her own world and she sees things her way and you know someone's uh, either a hero or a villain depending on how she feels about them uh, about them so we can't take Nee's word for everything because she's a narrator but um, a narrator that's only um, trying to get you to see everything from her side okay because the the way that she's acting she's only taking interest in her opinion and how she wants things and she's envisioning people to be in trouble when they're not because it doesn't fit what she wants she wanted to keep her sister she wanted to be close with her sister because that's her person uh but that's not how her sister viewed things um, so at several points within this short story um her sister took um you know took the side of of her husband or the mother or you know uh, other people rather than than um knee side i mean there's the one scene where um nee, um, um Surdy kisses duke um and knee is trying to understand it from her perspective but 
the way that Surti reacts or acts to certain things, she's thinking another way. Um, cause Surti, she's like a, an older woman. Well, she's very young, but she's she's older. She's probably thinking about her life and her future in different ways than Nee's thinking about her life and her future. Um, so you know, all these characters they have different perspectives to what's going on, but we're reading from from Nee's point of view, and her point of view is is really shaped towards her ideals. And when she's not getting what she wants, you know, other people get painted as villains. Now, when you're done reading the whole story, you can't say that Mr. Che is a bad husband. I mean, again, from the American perspective, we can say that he's a bad husband because there's no love or romance in the way that her, you know, the marriage takes place between Surdy and Mr. Che. But ultimately, it ends in a in a good place. Um, you know, ultimately, it ends in a good place. He's a provider. Um, we can we see that he can be reasonable. Um, you know, Surdy wanted to go back to school. Um, and ultimately, he agrees for her to go back to school and get her education, you know, after the children grow up a little bit. Um, and, and that's that's compromise, you know, in weddings and marriage, there's going to have to be some compromises. And, you know, he's not like saying you can never get an education. He he ultimately he agrees for her to go back to school and get an education and hopefully get a job. Um, so he's not an unreasonable man. He's an, I mean, the other thing that we as the reader could hate about Mr. Che is that he's uh, much older than 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 Surdy. Um, and I mean, in in the American point of view, or I mean, in other countries, that that can be okay. There's some cult cultures where um, not too old, but it, I would say there's some cultures where. Um, um, older men getting married to younger women are okay. Um, I mean, from the American perspective, we kind of like, um, I would say most people are okay with 10 years old. Like, okay, let's say someone is is 30. Uh, most people are okay with them dating all the way like 30 to 40, like 10 years back 10 years forward so if you're 30 most people are okay with you dating somebody all the way to 40 and most people are okay with you dating somebody all the way to down as low as 20 um it depends on who you ask but uh, in in the american culture we want young people to stick with young people um and and in other people it, this could be on a person-to-person -person basis but in other culture um in america it it can flip and but generally speaking uh, we like people to stay in their age bracket, but in other cultures, um, it's not uncommon to see the husband much older or somewhat older than, than the wife. Um, so it, in that sense, you can say sometimes we, you can say that by looking at Mr. Che at the beginning, you could be like, you hate him, you don't like him, because uh, the, the relationship between Duke and, and Surdy seemed to be more natural, more loving than Che's wedding or relationship with Surdy because it's it's more business-like. Um, so this is an interesting look at, at Asian culture and, and also the role that, 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 that parents play in it. Uh, it's a much more significant role than than you you're you're used to seeing uh, much more kind of like they made all the decisions and and you know young people do not like to see that in 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 you know people deciding on who they get married to um and and parents or or elders having that much decision power um so at the end of this 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 we do see the the differences in siblings and and the separation, the closeness that Surdy and Ni nee had when they were kid, we, we when they were kids, we kind of see that separation between them, um, and how Surdy becomes more of an adult figure, and and Ni nee is still she needs to grow up, but she still needs to grow up a little bit, and how she's kind of you know the story ends with her kind of being left alone and kind of like reflecting on her life in her own perspective in her own world, trying to fit her own ideals. Uh, when the ideals of the other people around her are not the same as hers. Um, so yeah, that's all I had to say about uh, this short story by Mei Li Chai. Um, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.